going on guys? Eddie from Beard Juice. I am bringing you a camping video today actually. Um, not anything to do with the beard, I know. But uh, I am going to be doing some winter camping with my brother-in-law coming up soon. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever done winter camping, but it's actually very... Uh, you need the right gear. Um, we're actually going to be doing some uh, hammock winter camping. So you need even more specialized gear than normal. Um, we do plenty of hammock camping normally. So I got the hammock, I got my straps, I have my ridge line, I got most of the stuff I need. I don't have an under quilt though, and I don't really want to wake up with a frozen tush. So this video is actually going to be me kind of showing you guys how I'm going to make a, or hopefully going to make a DIY under quilt out of the sleeping bag that I already have. So I have, uh, I have two. One of them is an older, I'll show you guys here in a second. Um, one of them is an older, both of them are filled and stream. One of them is about, uh, I don't know, eight years old. Um, it's a little, uh, a little smaller, a little more lightweight. Use that as a uh, kind of a summer or a maybe fall, spring kind of sleeping bag. It's rated for 20 degrees, but uh, yeah, I've never slept in it in 20 degrees and it's actually got me warm. So... Yeah, I went out and bought a better one. It's a newer filled in stream bag. Uh, it's also rated for 20 degrees and it's always done a great job whenever we're camping. Um, usually don't winter camp in the absolute coldest environments. Um, usually more like uh, like 20s is like the lowest it goes. Um, usually in uh, southern Indiana, so I live in the Midwest, so we're usually like southern Indiana, possibly Michigan, uh, about 18 to 20 degrees is about as cold as we go. Um, so I was thinking, oh, I have this newer, nicer filled and stream bag. I'll just use that as a sleeping bag for wintertime, normal sleeping bag, and I'll make an underquilt out of this older bag that I don't really care about as much. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't do its job with the sleeping bag very well, and it's older. So let's Frankenstein it and see what we can do and turn it into an underquilt. Well, well, more maybe. Uh, let me back up a second. Uh, maybe more like a uh, mummy pod kind of thing, um, like a pod system that goes around the whole sleeping bag instead of just an under quilt that hangs out underneath the hammock. More of like a whole pod, like a hammock inside a sleeping bag kind of thing. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of research on the internet and found some other people who have done some DIY ones, so that's what we're going to do. Although I've come up with a few things that I want to do that could possibly be an improvement on the designs that I've seen so far. Um, so let's go over here and take a look at the bags that we have. Alright. here. So, um, so I was pretty stoked because the old bag I had, I was like, oh, yay, free DIY underquilt. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go out and buy anything. I hate spending money on camping gear. You spend enough time in the military and you get used to just using whatever you have. So I uh, grabbed out the old bag, pretty stoked. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do this. Well, it's pretty tiny. I never realized it. It's really thin. Um, and for an underquilt, you kind of want it to hang below your sleeping bag a little bit to give you like a little air pocket between your butt and um, underquilt. Like you want a little air pocket there. Sorry, a little, little brain fart. I forgot what I was going to say. Um, and this uh, older sleeping bag I have is a little small, like a little tight on the side. So I don't know if that's going to be something that I'm going to be able to use or not. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see with the light and everything. Something's coming in the garage pretty good right now. Um, but uh, I've just got it mounted up on my garage rails um, for this testing purpose to test the underquilt. Don't worry, guys. I know those are not going to be strong enough, or at least mine aren't. I don't know about your guys' garage rails, but my garage rails are not strong enough to hold my weight. You got 200 plus pounds, a dude just hanging on them. They're pull right out of the wall. And it's a pretty new garage, so I don't want to do that. Um, so here we go. Here is the sleeping bags i have the older one on top and i have the newer one on the bottom just to kind of show you like the size differences um, so there we go um, the red one on top there 
is the older one that I was planning on using, and the blue one underneath is the newer zero degree field and stream that I got. Um, as you can see, I mean, they're just, it's just right on top. There's a little more of a centralized shot there for you. Um, the blue one is quite a bit wider and larger in general. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the newer blue field and stream zero degree bag as my pod system bag and then I'm thinking about using the uh, the red guy as an overquilt for in the bag um, which an overquilt is basically just a uh, sleeping bag I mean it's a blanket that you wear or you use while you're in the hammock uh, a true overquilt typically doesn't have the zipper on it um, and or as much fabric on the side so it's actually kind of more of a uh, and no a hood usually um, it's more of a uh, blanket that just kind of lays on top of you and it has a foot box like a sleeping bag but it doesn't have a zipper that goes up the side because you're just supposed to kind of tuck it around, around the sides um, so I think that's what I'm going to do with the extra bag that I have uh, <clears throat> I'll just kind of put it inside my hammock uh, and kind of zip up inside of that, kind of tuck it down, um, stay, keep my top warm, extra warm, where the under quilt's keeping my butt a little warmer. So, uh, what I'm planning on doing, which is going to be a little different, so I don't know um, any of you guys out there have done other videos on, or re done other research on DIY under quilts, but a lot of times people just or DIY uh, pods, I guess, under quilts also. Um, but a lot of times people just uh, will uh, cut a hole straight in the foot of a sleeping bag um, and then either sew it up or tape it up or whatever um, and then just use that to feed their sleeping bag through that. Um, and then, or so feed their uh, hammock through it, sorry. Um, you also cut a hole in the top and feed the hammock up through that and the top and the hood. Um, kind of area um, but what I'm gonna do is instead of just cutting into it just cutting a hole like a lot of people do I'm gonna do more of a I don't know kind of a square flap um, I'll reinforce it where it is gonna fold back and forth so it doesn't tear up um, but uh, do a kind of a flap kind of deal so let me just kind of show you here real quick um, so this is the uh, foot box, so it's a nice big, uh, right here. Um, it's a nice big square foot box we got. Um, I'm thinking about just cutting a flap like that so it comes back, so it'll lift up, uh, and then attaching a zipper to it. So that way it doesn't actually ruin my entire sleeping bag. That's the goal, at least. So, um, I'm bring it over here to my workbench real quick. Oof. Okay. Um. Sorry, that light from the garage, or light from the, uh, the light coming into the garage there is a little. little right for that angle so I'll kind of bring it back this way show you guys from the other side it's like Blair Witch Project jaggedy video don't you yeah I thought so so here you go a little bit better I'm just gonna sketch out a little uh, um, the area that I want to cut and then we'll start scissoring away and see how this goes. I'm also, just to let you guys know, this is the first time I've ever done this. Anything like this. I've never DIYed any camping material. I've never like cut and sewn and created. Never created something at home that I'm going to actually take with me on a camping trip. So this is going to be a first. You guys are experiencing it with me for the first time. And let's just pray that it works because I really don't feel like going out and spending another couple hundred dollars buying a sleeping bag. Granted, this one was cheap. The Field and Stream Zero Degree was like, I want to say it was like 90 bucks and I had like a $50 gift card. So I got it pretty cheap. Um, 
Hopefully what we do here today does not just destroy it, but provides me with an awesome sleeping pod experience. And you guys can all go replicate it as well and just love life. Okay, guys. So I wanted to get some video while doing this. So I don't have like a, like a helmet cam or I don't have anything like to mount my camera on. So I'm holding it while I'm trying to show you. But uh, I just want to show you kind of how I did this. I stuck the knife, a big old K-bar I used. <laughs> uh, use whatever you want. But I stuck my knife up in through the sleeping bag here. So this is the foot box down there. Took my knife up in here and grab the handle real quick. Boom, got it. Um, Stuck it. Boom, right through. I don't know if you guys can see on the fabric. There's a little bit of uh, markings. I drew I drew out my foot bot or the hole, the flap I'm going to cut. Stuck my knife up through it and see. It's pretty thick material actually, like um, kind of crazy. So it did take a couple, a bit of poking and slicing and jarring and stuff. Um, and then also, if you noticed, it's a little, f there, there are multiple layers to a sleeping bag. So it's, um, and there's all the stuffing in there. So what I'm going to do is as I, once I get my flap cut, I'm actually going to just use some uh, duct tape. I got some around here somewhere. There it is. Um, I'm just going to use some duct tape here to uh, seal it so I don't lose any of the stuffing. And then after I'm done with that, I will actually come back around and sew it closed. So I'm actually going to take, I'll show you this when I get to that point, but the plan is to take some fabric strips and sew them around the opening portion. Um, once again, I've never done this before, so who knows if this is going to work or not. But uh, I'm gonna sew the fabric around the op around the cut pieces of the sleeping bag, so it just kind of like like clamp over the top of the um, opening part, um, and then I'm going to go once I make it to the store because I haven't been able to actually get to the store to buy the zipper stuff yet. But I'm gonna go buy zippers um, to sew also that around the outside as well so it'll have fabric around it originally for the sewing to keep everything in and then um, zippers around that once i get to that point okay so uh, we've gotten a little bit further i'm going to give you a little update here while i'm cutting along and the tag back out of the way there but uh i got one section of the box flap cut out there you can see um and as I said, I've just been using like this white duct tape here, just keeping the bag kind of together so all the layers don't come apart and don't lose any of the bag, but uh, any stuffing here. But uh, here's a little bit, I want to leave this open here so I can show you. So you got the, uh, this is the, this gray part is the interior liner. That's what's touching your skin down there. And you got a couple layers of this foam stuff, at least in this bag, like, yeah, some kind of mesh material here, um, then foam, mesh, foam, mesh, foam, goes back and forth. Um, then it eventually gets to the outside material. So that is what we'll be sewing up eventually. And so I'm trying to, um, trying to keep together for now until we get to sewing. So yep, just rinse and repeat. Get yourself a nice little flap and then go from there. All right, so uh, here is the uh, progress so far. Um, and you see I've got it all cut out. I've got the whole foot box cut out now. Or not whole foot box, but i got my flap cut out. Um, this is what I was talking about um, earlier. It's like closing it up. So I'm going to leave this attached. Um, this is all sticking out enough, I think, that... Uh, there's no need for me to duct tape around here. I can just hit this up with needle and thread to begin. Um, I did duct tape around this part because I didn't want the fabric, these uh, layer, different layers and stuff, I didn't want them to get loose and get shoved back up inside the sleeping bag, have it all start unraveling, coming apart. Like that would not be fun to deal with. Um, so yeah, so now I'm going to take this shirt which is the best shirt of all time, I think. Um, yeah, if we can read it, it's exercise, ex 
er size, XR size, eggs are sides for bacon. Bacon! Um, actually, absolutely love this shirt, but unfortunately, um, I was a smaller man when I purchased it. I was putting it nicely. Um, it's a medium. Um, pushing 210. Um, so, it doesn't really fit anymore. I had, uh, you saw I cut the sleeves off, cut a little V in the neck, kind of made it a little bit easier to move around in a medium shirt, being as large as I am. Uh, didn't really help a whole lot, used it a couple times, still pretty tight, so boom. Just going towards the Frankenstein hammock project thing. I don't, I think... Mummy Pod is an actual item of a brand, and I probably shouldn't call it that. So, Frankenstein sleeping bag quilt hammock doohickey is my product name. <laughs> I'm back, and I actually sewed something. Bam! Not very good. I'm not gonna learn any words, but I sewed something. It stayed together. Let's do this thing. It's no longer a can I do it, but uh, how long is it going to take me to do it? So that's kind of cool. So here, let's check it out. Um, yeah, so we got uh, this piece of fabric. So I just cut it out of my shirt, actually. You can see, I just got a big old chunk out of there. Um, and uh, I just sewed it along one edge of my flap here. Um, I will trim up the excess fabric as well uh, but I'm gonna go through uh, I don't know probably a handful more times obviously I mean I got better with it as I went down my um, get a little closer view there um, awful stitching but it is what it is first time for everything um, I was really far apart in my stitches up at the top here so um, I got better as I went down, got tighter, um, so I'll go through and probably do another uh, two or three rounds of stitching along that, but first I'm going to finish off the other sides, um, and then the foot box area as well, so um, it's honestly not as hard as I thought it would be. Um, I can't really feel my fingers, so it's hard to do this fine-tuned work without feeling in your fingertips. Um, I'm just paying attention to where the needle point is and not stabbing myself with it. Um, so it'll probably take me quite a while to do the rest of this because uh, my inexperience in it uh, and how cold I am, but um, get, get it knocked out. I'll check back in with you guys if anything major happens or um, once it's um, all sewed up and good to go. All right, guys. Um, been working on this for a while now. I think I started around like 4 o'clock about 5 30 um about an hour and a half uh, doing video talking to you guys cutting up the bag sewing it up all that good stuff um still not even close to being done the sewing thing is definitely the slowing thing boom anyway uh i got into a got into a motion with the sewing figured out some stuff i um, had to do a little bit of youtube research um trying to uh figure out how to like I the knots off and started and knotted and how to finish a knot and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've also gone over it a couple times, but I want to show you guys where I am for tonight. I'm calling it quits for tonight. Um, it's about 5.30. Got to get in and start cooking dinner. Um, got some other stuff going on tonight, too, so I can't finish it up today. Uh, but I will finish it up and let you guys know how it is. Uh, so here we have our product so far. Uh, sorry, the lighting has kind of changed on us, uh, but uh, here is the flap. So it was all open, you guys remember? Um, got it all stitched up down along there, stitched the top up, and I did get one layer. This is the layer I showed you guys, but I got uh, one side with fabric on it. I'm going to do that to help uh, protect it and uh, add extra um, strength. The fabric, the extra fabric on there. It's not just the sleeping bag, silky material, but I get some nice thick cotton. Um, and then also that will, I'm gonna put it all on all sides of the flap and on all around the uh, foot box. Um, it'll help uh, with the 
of the insulation that I'm losing by cutting up the bag if I'm going to have it zipped up um, using it as an actual sleeping bag. By cutting it open like this and putting all the stitching in, it's going to lose a lot of the insulation down that footbox area. So keeping it, keeping the cotton shirt there padded, the zipper will allow it to help keep some of that um, stay stay a little bit warmer than it would have if we didn't do that. Um, so I'm going to call it quits tonight, head on inside, eat some dinner, and then I will knock this bad boy out. Um, it's Wednesday, probably Friday. Um, I'm going to be uh, taking the dog to the vet and taking it a little slow on Friday. So uh, that's probably when I'll be finishing this guy off. Morning, YouTube. Back at it today, uh, finishing up the uh, project today, hopefully. Um, I still have to go to the store and buy some zippers, so that may or may not occur today. Um, so I might not be able to get 100% done, but that's the goal. Uh, it's colder and I'll get out today, so I'm working with the garage door closed. Um, so hopefully my big old E on the wall here isn't uh, messing with the lighting and the camera too much. Uh, I need it on so I can see what I'm working on. Not the best light. I got some bulbs up there on the ceiling and my big old E. Um, and I brought out... Uh, a lamp from our guest bedroom and took the shade off because sewing in the dark is really difficult but anyway um yeah so i got my nice uh beard going this morning had to meet with some clients this morning so uh did a little bit of grooming a little trimming up some oil and some stuff using uh my uh beard juice get check that out So, yeah, I hope the light's not messing with the camera or anything. Um, we are, got some, got some progress done this morning on the uh, pod. Got the rest of the foot box sewed in. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. So, so, still got my yarn and thread attached. Um, yarn and thread and needle, whatever, something, sewing something. Uh, but finished the flap, got it all sewed up all the way around, it's nice and sturdy, did a couple passes on it. Um, I have no idea what kind of sewing technique it was, I just ran, let me get it a little closer so you can see some of the stitching. Um, just did some back and forth on it and um, not much of a sewer, so it seems pretty solid for now. It's, couple passes um, that's just with this I'm gonna be adding the strips of cloth all the way around today um, and hopefully the zipper as well but uh, we'll find out if I am not too lazy to go to the store uh, that's usually what happens just like doing projects where I have the stuff at home to work on already not really a big store person um, so that's the project for now and uh, I'll update you guys again when I've got a little bit more done What's up guys? Uh, finished all the sewing that I'm going to be able to do here um, right now. Uh, I decided that I'm going to enlist the help of my mother-in-law for the zipper part. Um, I did some research online about zippers and how to sew them on and stuff. And, um, basically, like for this application, I want it to be nice and sturdy and really rugged. Uh, I feel like the hand stitching the zipper on, or hand, yeah, hand stitching the zipper on is going to be a lot more difficult uh, than using a sewing machine. And I don't happen to have a sewing machine, so that's where the mother-in-law comes in. She uh, she loves sewing. She has all sorts of projects like that. Uh, so I'm going to uh, borrow her knowledge to complete the footbox area. Um, but uh, until then, I'm going to show you what I've completed myself, um, and we'll go from there. So here you go. Um, try to get you a good angle with the light. There we go. Uh, so I have it all sewed up now. So you can see it's all nice and tight. Um, get you close up there. Make sure we can uh, focus on it. Um, so that is all my hand stitching. Got the little flap that goes up. Um, it's roughly box shaped still. It has, you can tell it's the corners. It didn't turn into like a round shape or anything. It's a lizard shape. Um, but because it is boxed, like, I feel like the zipper will fit that fairly well. Uh, that's the plan is to add a zipper that goes all the way around. 
touchdown. Uh, some of the flaps of cloth I used, I actually left on the inside. Um, I left it longer on the inside. Uh, so I trimmed it out around the outside here, I trimmed off the excess cloth, but uh, left some of this on the inside um, just to help with insulation. I mean, it's a thin layer of cotton t-shirt, but um, cutting up the bag and using a like putting a zipper on, that's gonna lose a lot of the thermal um, properties from this area. So any extra bit of insulation I can get, I'll take. So I'm gonna leave that, uh, that little layer there. Um, so, yep, so I'm done with the foot box area now. Clean off a bit. Um, and the next thing that I need to do is the um, top part, the hood. The hood. Uh, so the foot box, we cut it in a, like a square, a rectangle, squarish thing. Had a flap, all good and dandy. Um, for the head, for the top part, I'm thinking about just doing a slit. Um, It'd be a lot faster, a lot easier. Um, and for up there, I wanted the flap down at the bottom. Um, once this is all completed, I'll kind of show you guys why I wanted it. But uh, basically, so when it hangs in the hammock, that flap's going to be on top. So I'll be able to tuck it into the hammock uh, at the foot area where, the, where your feet hang in. Um, so that should help keep the, uh, um, keep some wind and cold out of the hammock a little bit um, having that flap that drop down into that footbox area. I mean it's nice and tiny but uh, I mean the flap obviously I mean it's small it's not huge but uh, the uh, section of the hammock that it'll be going into is it'll be tight too because I mean it's a foot box. I mean that's where the hammock gets narrow up there so uh, hopefully I'll be okay um, once I have it all done I'll show you but for the head area I'm not planning on having anything that flaps down because it's a big mummy hood so I mean it's already kind of built in it's already doing its thing uh, so I'm just gonna cut a little slit um, not little but enough to put the hammock through um, and then we'll uh, uh, sew it up like we did this one and then put some cloth around it like we did with this one and we'll put zippers on that also so we can zip up that hole in the top so um, i'm going to start uh, measuring out and cutting for the the hood area and then once i get that done i will um, show you i'll it'll, same process as the foot so or the foot box so i'm not going to show you every step for the hood uh, but i'll show you the completed product once i have it okay so we're back i have everything done on it that I can do. Uh, so I'm about at the point where I can actually string it up on a hammock um, just for testing purposes, um, which I might do here in a little bit. But uh, uh, I finished the hood, finished the top area, um, and the foot box. And here you go, let's take a look at it. So this is the head area. So you look at the Sitting back, this is like the hoodie where you would, uh, the mummy part. Um, and this is the little slit that I cut in it. Um, and on the outside, actually, it was really thick. <laughs> so you remember the shirt that I um, showed you guys that I was cutting up to use as parts for this project, uh, for the, the roundabout part, um, the fabric? It uh, said the big old letters said bacon on the front of it because who doesn't like bacon, like right? Everybody should have a shirt that says bacon on it. Anyway, um, I cut the word bacon out, and it was like big, big, big tall uh, black letters. Um, so that that strip was really thick. Um, I used that for the hood, um, and I actually, yeah, I used the word bacon and wrapped it around. You can't really read it, but you can see the red lettering, and I know that it says bacon, so. I got a bacon sleeping bag now. <clears throat> but yeah, it says bacon. Um, yeah, so since it was so thick, uh, the fabric, I flared it out. And actually, um, so I sewed around the rim, close to the hole here, did double stitch um, all the way around. And then um, I flared out the thick part, or the flat part, flared it out. And I did a single stitch to kind of get it tight down against the sleeping bag on the outside here. And on the inside I did leave the extra flap. Um, kind of show you like I did earlier, like I was talking about, uh, any of that extra fabric around the openings would be nice just for uh, um, kind of keeping it warm and stuff. 
it's not the best for uh, looks. It's not as clean and crisp with all that extra fabric on there, but uh, I'm going for warmth while I'm winter camping in December, so extra fabric it is. Uh, yeah, so I think we're darn near finished now. Um, got the bag up. It's it technically functional right now. Um, you know, it's, it's hanging. Well, we're good to go. Like, I could go camp in this tonight if I wanted to. Um, degrees uh, tonight are supposed to be like in the 20s. Um, definitely not going to. After work in the morning. So, uh, don't really feel like going out camping in 20 degree weather with a uh, untested sleeping bag. So, um, yet. We have a camping trip planned for later in December. Um, it's currently the end of November right now, so um, I will update you guys once I've been able to actually take this guy out and actually use it. Um, and uh, it should be pretty cold by then. It's already in the 20s at night in November here. Um, expecting December to be quite the chilly event. Um, but uh, yeah, so there it is. Once I have 100% finished it, like all the little details, like the zipper and the cinch cord and the bungees to kind of pull it up to the ends. Boom, bungees like this, check it out. I uh, just wasn't an idiot and I went and got the little bungees I have in my car and just ran them through real quick. My sleeping bag already had these little loops down here at the bottom. So I just ran a uh, car bungee that I already had through those guys. Um, and I just hooked another one up. So this one might not, for demonstration purposes, this is gonna work. Like you can see, it's much better. Not nearly as close to the ground anymore. Um, much more strung out along the entire length of the uh, sleeping bag. I mean the hammock. I'll do a uh, follow-up video for you guys um, to kind of show you the uh, finished details on it. But for now, I think it was a success. At least it looks like it for now. Good luck to all you guys, and keep the beard strong.